My apologies for the last tutorial. I missed something. You need to actually uh, apply the grub file configuration, new configuration, the grub file before uh, before you actually do the reboot. So you're gonna need to do another reboot. So just type in this command that I'm typing in on the screen now, and then reboot the machine. It just slipped my mind, kind of difficult to talk and type at the same time and think of all the things that I need to think of, even though I am looking at my notes, but uh, they are helpful to an extent, I guess. Anyway, uh, now that that is done, we need to go ahead and type in dmesg grep pci dash stub. Excellent. So now here in the stub, you can see all the devices that are claimed by the stub. So you can see that our graphic card here is actually, and the audio controller, that they are both claimed by the stub. You can see them all the way down. Everything that we needed to be claimed is claimed by stub without any problems. And it is there. So you need to take a look at the these numbers and compare them and see if they're actually claimed or not. If they're claimed, it's good. If they're not, it's bad, but they will be claimed. So thus far, so far, so good. The next thing that we need to do, is, well, we don't actually need to do it, but we can do it. Uh, dash VV and then dash S. And we can go ahead and take a look at what driver is using it. <sighs> Why did I close that? Why did I do that, I wonder? Okay. Well, let me just bring it back. I don't know, for some strange reason I closed it. LS PCI, and then I can type in dash VV, dash S, and then like zero 04. I'm just gonna go with one of them. It's zero zero zero. Hmm, wasn't it this one? Ah, right, right, right. Okay, and this is what you are supposed to get. Kernel driver in use, PCI stub. So this is this is something that you need to uh, look for. It needs to be written there. Okay, now that that is done, all well, fine and dandy, now we need to go ahead and set up a virtual machine with UEFI BIOS. So this is not going to work without the UEFI firmware image uh, for the virtual machine. You need it in order for this PCI pass-through to actually work and function in a proper manner. So if you are on a Fedora, type in DNF, install at virtualization, and this will install all the packages this will install the group and all the packages within the group that you need for virtualization. But this might take a while for it to complete. It's already installed here, so I don't need to actually do anything else. Uh, there are, as you will need all the virtualization tools for that to complete. Now, the next thing that you will need to do is basically install, get the repos and all the things that you need in order to uh, have the OVMF images. Okay, let's go ahead and open up a browser. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy paste the address. Uh, if you can't see the address, let me just, here you go. So you can see the address in clear text here. This is where you need to go for Fedora in order to get the uh, in order to get the images for the UFE BIOS. And all you need to do is basically follow through the steps listed here. So no big deal. You need three basic commands, which you need to run and that's it. Nothing, no big, I mean, no big deal. So you just type in DNF install. It's, I'm, I'm literally going to copy paste them. Like there's no reason why you shouldn't. And, okay. Oh, God. Ha, ha, ha. Wait for it. 
Okay, so just type in install, it's already done. And you need the other one from here. So just add the repo and I don't know what else. Yep, there was just one more at the bottom. Just go ahead and do this. Excellent, so it's all done, it's all installed, it's all functional now, you don't need to perform a reboot. That's all you need to do in that regard. Now, uh, that you now since the UEFI firmware is there, uh, we need to go ahead and create our VM. Uh, in order to create a VM, just type in vert-manager, if you don't have it installed by some crazy chance, you can type in DNF install vert manager. It's already installed, but type in vert manager and it's gonna come up. You need to start it as root. You cannot start it otherwise. And I already have the two machines set up there. So you just type it, click on new virtual machine. You select local install media ISO. So you need to have a Windows 10 ISO image. You can download it for free from the net, but the register then you need to register it at a certain point in time. So if the registration is not for you, you actually have to buy the CD keys. But the installation file you can get from the Windows website. And do not get the Windows installation file from anywhere else. Go to the official Windows website. You can download it from there. There is no reason for you to go and download something, God knows what, from the torrents with a key again. It's not that I am protecting the copyright of Windows or something like that. I, I do believe in copyright, regardless of what I might think of Windows. I still believe the, in the copyright laws. Uh, the, the reason why I'm telling you this, it's due to the fact that whoever puts it on torrents, you have no idea what else they've put into the operating system. God knows what that image file will do on your system once installed. So go over to the Microsoft official, Microsoft official website, download the, download, the, download the Windows 10 from them, and then you can get the CD key separately somewhere on the net. You can, I'm sure that there are hundreds of places where you can buy it or directly from Microsoft or from one of the vendors or from your local store or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, you have a local install media it says ISO image or CD-ROM. Oh, one more thing. It is important actually that your Windows is licensed as I have learned the hard way. I mean, I've just used the trial version and a lot of a lot of things didn't seem to work with the trial version. Like for example, I couldn't pass more than one uh, CPU core to the machine and the machine was incredibly slow because it functioned on, on a single CPU core. And then I realized through a painstaking process, I even called Microsoft and asked them and they were like, we have, we don't know anything about it, whatever. But then I went onto the Linux forums and I was enlightened by good people there from Linux questions who stated basically that, hey, if you want to pass more than one CPU core, you actually need to have a legitimate CD, a legitimate CD key for Windows 10 Pro and then it will be able to have multiple cores. And I was like, wow, it's not included in trial. What's the point? The trial expires in 90 days anyway, or something like that. Why would you disable such features? Why would you disable any features? It's a trial version. You need to try the features out. Anyway, my frustrations there were infinite, but I wanted to inform you in advance that if you want more than a single CPU core, you will actually need to have a, we will need to have a licensed CD key. Uh, local install media ISO, so just download the ISO from the net from the Microsoft site and then click on to forward, use the ISO image, browse, it should be in your downloads folder. And look, your downloads folder is not going to be listed here. So you need to click on plus, name your directory somehow, blah, 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 give it some name and click forward and then browse the target path, go into your home folder and then go into downloads and click on open and click on finish. And it couldn't create the storage pool. Uh, it already conflicts with the existing one, but you're not gonna get this error message for you. It's just going to go through. 
and you're gonna get downloads here so you're not gonna have it by default there at all you need to create the pools from which to create the virtual machines and this is how you do it so just find the Windows 10 ISO I have it here and then click on choose volume uh, that's it just click on forward assign RAM to it uh, you can't go with one gig of RAM I would advise a bare minimum of four and you can type in more than you can type in here two CPU cores but it's only going to recognize one until you register it and then click on forward you need a disk space I would the bare minimum, I know it says on Microsoft website that it's 20, I think, but I usually like to assign 30. And since you're going to install a lot of games, don't make the same mistake that I did. Assign at least two to 300 gigabytes here. So like this 300 gigabytes, make sure that you have enough space on your uh, drive. Uh, why 300? Well, or 200, I don't know, you can you can have less, you can have 100, you can have two, you can have 300, whatever. The machine is going to work with 30 gigabytes, okay? It's going to work without any problems with 30 gigabytes. The extra space you need in order to be able to install all the games, they need to be stored somewhere. But even if you do assign 30 gigabytes now, if you don't have a drive lying around, it's perfectly fine because later on you will be able to add more drives so you can have like a CD, EF partitions and you can store your games on a different partition in Windows. They don't need to be on C. Okay, so I'm just going to say 30 here, but you specify the amount that you need. 30 is the bare minimum. So go ahead and click on forward. Name your machine somehow. Uh, how to. I'm going to name my machine how to. And don't forget to click customize configuration before install. If you don't do that, this is going to fail click on finish and then go into overview and where it says firmware BIOS make sure to select UFE once you have selected it click on apply and wait for and then click begin installation in the upper left corner okay so there we go it's actually booting press any key to boot from a CD and there you go it's gonna work fine and dandy but let me just go ahead and state force off yes and go into the blue eye icon and where it says id cd rom id disk okay it says that this is the source path where it will be installed and from where it will be booted but uh, in the boot options it says disk one and sometimes it doesn't boot the way it booted for me so that's one of the problems that i've encountered and that's something that i want to sort out with you what you can do if it doesn't boot the way it booted for me here you can select the cd-rom you can push it up to the first place and then you can go into the id cd-rom uh, yes apply changes of course id cd-rom and click on to connect and then image image iso location go into downloads and select the windows 10 and click on choose volume and click on ok and then it's going to boot for sure off of that cd also before you actually start this machine, you need to type in Versh edit how to. How to is the name of the virtual machine and press enter. Oh, failed. No domain with matching how to. Oh, okay. It's case sensitive. And enter this file here. So press I to enter the insert mode. And you need to go down to where it says features. So right here. And here under the features, you need to uh, get this piece of code. Yep, so hidden state on. And then right quit, go, oh, failed. Try again, yes, why did it fail? Seriously? Ah, fail again. Ah, 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 okay, yes. Uh, need the, it need to change these quotes. Doesn't recognize them the same way. Right, quit, there you go. So the main how to XML configuration edited. 
we have successfully managed to change that. No longer need the browser. Okay, so let's go back to this machine here. Okay, now you can go ahead and start it. It has to say Tiano Core. If it doesn't, you're doing something wrong. Press any key to boot from a CD. And from this point onwards, it's a simple Windows installation. So I'm just going to go ahead and bid you farewell. We shall see each other in the follow-up tutorial. I'm just going to wait for it to boot. Basically, I won't do anything else.